Hi, Mrs. Hopkins here. Today's lesson will be how to make a model magic koi fish on a painted plate. We're gonna talk about what materials you'll need to make this masterpiece come to life. I think they look awesome. Here are the supplies that we're gonna use for today's project. The most important one is model magic. Mrs. Hopkins will cut this in half and give one half to each artist in the classroom. We're gonna use a paper plate and we're gonna paint that with tempera sticks or you could paint it with watercolor paint, whatever you have. These are the tempera paint sticks. They look like a glue stick. They twist up and down. Please be so careful with those today. We're also going to be using some little Crayola markers, water, and paint. These are the watercolor paints we will use today. I have special colors. We're gonna be using mostly orange and black. You'll see I have separate black and we'll use that shortly. It won't be in the tray. Before we begin painting, we always put our name on the back of our plate. Make sure you write it with something that's not gonna come off easily. Next, flip your plate over and pick your blue, white, or blue and violet with a little white and start going around in a circular motion on the inside of your plate. I like to leave the center white or a lighter color. The lighter colors in your pond might mean that there is a sun shining or a moon shining or the water is shallow. If the white gets dirty, you can always wipe it off. When you're using the paint sticks, as long as they're still a little wet or sticky, they can actually be blended with your fingers. After they dry, we can only blend them with a paintbrush and water. Keep going around in a circle with all the colors. If you don't get every single space filled in, that's okay. A few white spaces are all right because we can fill those in with the water and the brush when we activate the paint in just a few minutes. Remember to be careful with your paint sticks and don't twist them all the way up. Have fun filling in with your choice of cool colors on your little koi fish pond. Now we're ready to use some water to activate our tempera sticks. Now remember, tempera stick is a lot like watercolor. We're going to be using the water, wiping the brush every time on the cup, and cleaning it on the bottom, never ever tapping our brush. Go around, keep your brush pointed like a ballerina, always up on its toes, and keep going in a circular motion with your paint brush strokes. Round and around. This is when we can fill in all those white spaces that you left out before. Your paint will dry pretty fast, but if you have a puddle, please use your paper towel. You can use a paper towel to clean up any messes with this. It shouldn't be too messy. Try to leave the center pretty light. You can always get a temper stick and go back over it in case you accidentally made an area too dark or too blue or too white. You can go over it with more tempera sticks later. Now it's time to add our rocks. You can do your rocks in any formations that you want. I like to have at least one pile of rocks on either side of the bowl. Sometimes I do three little clusters of rocks. We're gonna use the black and white temper paint sticks to add these. Use shapes like ovals and circles or other organic shapes. Turn the edge of the bowl. When the paint stick is still wet, you can use your finger to blend it in, but be careful, you can get a little dirty. To make the different shades of gray, you're gonna to need to use your white 
paint stick. You can also use the white to add highlights and you can use the black to add more shadows. Fill it in however you want. You can have any shade of black, white, or gray stones that you would like. You can go all the way around or you can just have a few patches of stones. It's really up to you. Remember, we can wash our hands when everything is all done, so don't worry about getting a little dirty. And if you have a big problem, please raise your hand. I can come around and help you. If you smear something, we can always cover it up with another color paint stick. They're just like oil pastels. They are very forgiving. So let's have fun adding some rocks today. Don't forget, you can always clean off your dirty paint stick just like you would an oil pastel with a paper towel. Okay, when you get your Model Magic, you're gonna need to use your scissors to open the package. Flip it over and pull along the seam. Now remember, this is one pack of Model Magic for two students. So, I'm going to cut it in half and give you one half, okay? Please understand that when you touch Model Magic to your paper plate, it will stick and it's not going to want to come off. This one was not used with glue at all. I can dump it upside down. I could really kind of touch it and it's not really gonna move. Now, if you pick at it and pick at it and pick at it, it's gonna come off and you're gonna damage your art. Please don't ever do that. We're gonna use half a piece of Model Magic to create this koi fish with his 3D stones. So pay attention as we form the fish and as we form the stones. We're gonna color these with our marker to get a nice gray color, but the fish is gonna be painted with watercolor. Here we go. When you're starting your fish, it might be a good idea for you to pull off some pieces early on because sometimes you don't have pieces left over for rocks. So I like to pull off about three chunks, okay? I'm gonna keep this one over here for a rock, this one maybe for some fins, and this one for a tail. And then I have this little piece left over, okay? So all these pieces are about this size right here. I'm gonna make sure you guys have a good view of that. So my camera's been a little bit crooked today. Might be time to upgrade the old tripod that we have. So again, that's a tail piece, some fins, and something for a rock. It really doesn't take much model magic for the rocks because your rocks are smaller than you think they are. I'm gonna set those to the side and work on the body of the fish. When you have your lump of Model Magic, I would start by rolling it into a little tiny coil, okay? And a coil is just a tube. And you're gonna decide how long you want your fish to be. When you look at the plate, it's not very big. You can see that this takes up a lot of the space. So I'm gonna compare it to my finger. It's about the length of my finger. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch one of the ends and make it pointy. That is, I know where my tail is gonna be. And I'm gonna start pulling up the back of where the fish will be. This is like the ridge on his back. And I'm gonna round out the head. All right, so I'm pinching, just giving him like his top fin here, like a little tiny pinch up. And I'm rounding out the head, and I'm pointing where the tail is gonna attach. Now, once you know Model Magic sticks to other Model Magic, if you stick it and you don't like where it's stuck, just take it all apart and start over. It's okay, you're gonna have plenty of time. For the tail, I'm gonna split this piece into two and I'm gonna roll them into small little coils. I'm gonna pinch a teardrop shape, pinch a teardrop shape, okay? Now, when I attach it, I'm gonna pinch them together and pinch it together. Then you can flatten it out with your fingers a little bit, and I like to pinch the edge. So there is my fish tail. You can decide how big you want it by making it flatter. 
super fun. See how we did that? All right. Now I'm gonna decide what's gonna be rocks and what's gonna be fins. I really don't need my fins to be big, and I wanna make them comparable to the size of my tail. So I'm gonna start pulling some pieces off and decide how big they really need to be. So this looks like it's about to be the same size as the tail, and I want them to be a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna roll them into a short little coil, okay, kind of like a little bean size, and pinch them into a teardrop shape. I'm gonna attach one and see if I like it first before I attach the other. Flatten it out a little. And if you wanna leave it, like this one I left around, it's up to you. You decide for your shape of your fin. Pinch it into a teardrop shape. That's how I like to attach. And kind of flatten it out. I'm gonna very carefully pick it up every time because it likes to get stuck. I have this much left over, so this will be rocks. This fin could be a little bigger, so I'm gonna pinch it out to match. There's my fish. My ridge was trying to flop down. Now I have to decide, do I want it to be swimming one direction over maybe to the right, maybe over to the left. Right now he's swimming straight. I'm gonna kinda decide on my plate. I'll curve the other way. <laughs> maybe this direction, okay? And once you put it on there, it's gonna wanna stick. Mine wants to stick, so I'm just gonna be real careful. I'm gonna push him down, because that's where I like it. Press the head down a little bit, but don't smosh it too much, okay? Because you don't want it to look like a whale or a hammerhead shark. We have a koi fish. Now we're gonna leave him in here and we're gonna paint him when he's in the plate. We could paint him before, but I'm gonna let your class paint on the plate. I'm gonna make sure he's stuck nice, nice and tight on there. All right. And remember, everybody's koi fish is gonna be a little bit different. And that's okay. I like when everybody has something unique. Speaking of unique, let's add some 3D rocks on top of the ones we've already done. We're gonna use our Crayola markers gray or black would be a great color to dye your model magic that you have left over. We can roll it out into a little ball and if you don't over mix it you can get a really cool marbling effect just like what you see here. If you would like it to be more gray keep mixing and mixing and mixing and you'll get more color spread out into the model magic. You can break it into as many small pieces as you'd like but please put them on top of where you already have rocks drawn on from your tempera paint sticks. I think it's important that we have rocks underneath because if you just have one floating on top, it's not gonna look as realistic. It's gonna help this sculpture come to life. And this is a relief sculpture. That means that it's flat up against the wall and the 3D parts pop out. It doesn't have a, a 3D side to the back of it. One side is flat. So that is a relief sculpture. And this really helps it come to life. So have fun making your rocks and put them where you think they belong. Remember, model magic is very sticky. So when you put it on, if you try to pull it off, it's gonna not wanna come. It's gonna get stuck on your plate. But no mistakes, only happy accents like Bob Ross says. Have fun with your rocks. Now it's time to paint our fish and add the finishing touches to this project. Remember, we're only going to be using orange and black watercolor paint please make sure that you wipe your brush. When you wake up the paint, only add a little bit of water and put little blotchy spots of orange or black wherever you'd like to have them on your koi fish. Remember, those are the colors we're using. You can leave white space or you can paint more orange and black. It's 100% up to you. When you're ready to change colors, please clean your brush really well in the bottom of the cup and always wipe it. If you'd like to add some tiny little splatters, make sure that when you flick, you're pointing your brush the direction you would like those splatters to go. If the splatters end up in the water, just use a little bit of clean water to blend them in. You can always touch it up with the watercolor blue or violet in your tray. When you're all the way finished with your painting, you could use a Sharpie or a Crayola marker to add a couple eyes. 
A Sharpie is a really good thing to use to add some whiskers on your koi fish to make it look more like a catfish. And you can use your oil pastels to add floating cherry blossoms or flowers or even some leaves in the water. Have so much fun, take your time, and make sure you're focusing on your craftsmanship today.